Yeah, all right, if you end farm lights. All right, I moved everything into the shop basically because it's better light in here and everything was in here. I kept having to come in here to get something, go back out in the shed. Uh, plus, now I got uh, a lot of heat shrinking to do, so I need the heat gun and just easier in here. Well, I won't say easier. Anyway, uh, so I got my uh, negative positive wire to put my batteries in parallel. I've got, uh, this is goes to the charger, so if I have to charge it on the, the uh, charger, I can just I'll have that hooked up. I just got this switch, my uh, on-off kill switch, whatever you want to call it, and I just went ahead and put a hole right back there. So I'm going to go ahead and thread it in. I don't know if you can over here Let's see if you can see that uh, looks like it so uh, this switch I got I had some other ones but there's no way to mount them through this uh, box so this one uh, basically screws on And then uh, on the outside here, there you go, you got your switch on and off. Definitely gonna have to take that up a little bit. That's all, that's off, that's on. I think we're just gonna make it like so. I'll tighten it up a little bit more. Let's see if I can tighten it up. Got that hooked in. Now I'll make some wires for it. Uh, anyway, we'll be back. Oh my god, the horse in the background. Not happy because he's waiting for everybody else to come in. But anyway, so uh, I've got my uh, I've got the charger hooked up. So we charge across these. Um, I've got my battery set parallel. I got my switch hooked up, the switch is off. I got my negative that's gonna go to the negative bus bar. This is gonna go to the, the positive bus bar. And I did take those ends off just cause they're kind of flopping around. I didn't wanna take any chance of shorten anything out. Uh, so next I'm gonna cut a hole. Uh, so I'm gonna see right here for the um, inverter uh, remote so you can turn it on and off from outside. So I go ahead, went ahead and lined it out with some uh, soapstone because black sharpie uh, doesn't work very well on that. And uh, also that the thing is tapered a little bit so I'm actually going to go on the outside of the line it should fit a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and cut it with this multi tool. Let's see how this works. That's it. I think we're good. We'll go ahead and clean it up and we'll see how that thing fits. We'll be right back. It's, it's actually a little loose, uh, but I got some screws to go in here. I'll just screw it in, tighten it down, and uh, we're good with this one now. Um, all right, we'll be back. We're going to go ahead and cut out the one for the uh, battery monitor. All right, if you farm, I've got that screwed on. Uh, my Alrighty fans farm life. Looks like I got the layout. So this is gonna be it. I guess I didn't need this super monster cable, right? Alrighty fans farm life. As you can see, things have changed again. Um, I just didn't have the room up here. 
make these cables are just going to be too tight of bands to try to, to bend them. So I move the bus bars over to here. I'm going to run this cable into here. I'm going to run, then I'll run it from here to here, from here, back around to here. This one's going to go into here. It's going to come out almost straight into here. I've already got the uh, 12 volt fuse panel wired up as far as the plus and minus goes. Uh, I got the negative running over to the negative. I got the positive running over to the positive. I got this bolted down. This 30 amp uh, basically circuit breaker on off switch for the charge controller is in. I don't have it tightened down yet. I don't have this secured yet. Uh, I'm going to put some bolts or nuts on the bottom of this so I can raise it up a little bit, give it a little bit of uh, airflow. Uh, once I get that done, then I'm going to work on uh, getting all of this other 12 volt stuff in, get the cables extended, get them ran around, put them in here, put them in the fuse block. Uh, I might end up moving that a little bit farther over but anyway I think I can get all that stuff in there uh, get them in the fuse block and then uh, then after that I'm gonna work on getting this hooked up get the fuse in get the uh, battery monitor in all right fans farm life all right I've got the all of the USB cigarette lighter this 12 volt stuff all ran into this rat's nest into the fuse block along with the fan that's down underneath uh, I just want to make sure it all fit I've got extra wire that I'm going to try to stuff down here or down here so when I pull this if I have to pull this piece off I got extra uh, wires to do it so and I'll also have to take this off, which will just be taking this whole piece. I'll just have to disconnect a couple things in here, but all of that should come off. Then I can take it all off. So, anyway, it's a little bit of a rest nest. I got to get that cleaned up, but I just want to make sure it all connect. And uh, and I still got to heat shrink a couple of these things and label them, figure out what's what. So it'll all come back off again, but it all fits now. So. Um, we're going to move on to wiring the battery up, and uh, then we'll come back. All right, so, up. so I got all of my uh, wires cut. This one's going to go there. This one is going to go from here to the inverter. I've got my, uh, this is my positive from the battery. It's going to go there. This one's going to go from here to the fuse. I got my fuse to here. Uh, I just have to get the battery monitor in here, and I got to redo all of this rat's nest here. I'm just going to disconnect it from the fuse block, run it back, <clears throat> and then uh, try to organize it a little bit. Flies. I guess when you work in a barn. Um, yeah, I think we're just almost there. It's down now to getting the battery monitor in. Um, my uh, turn my 12 turned it on. I just turned this on. I don't have the inverter hooked up yet. I do have the battery monitor hooked up. So I can see no solar coming in. I got that turned off anyway. There's nothing coming in there. I do have, I checked all of these, they are on, you can tell by the blue light, I did not check this one, I don't have a cigarette thing to plug into there. Um, the monitor is working, I still have to get it set up, so I'm going to hook up, going to hook up the inverter, and then uh, plug those in, and then... Uh, We'll check the monitor and see what kind of voltage or what kind of uh, load we're pulling. Anyway, uh, 
Let's do the big spark right here, and then we'll have everything hooked up. We'll come on back. Farm life. On. All righty, fans. Farm life. So we got everything hooked in. Uh, you can see the. Uh, you can see there. That is the. Um, inverter. So I have. Everybody runs a heat gun for some reason, so you got a heat gun. I'll just put it on the first setting. And um, this is uh, low on this heat gun. And it's hitting at 573 watts. Then if you come up here, you can look. That's saying 560. You know, about 580, 562, about the same. Uh, 42 amps. This is minus 42 amps. So that's what it's using. We'll go ahead and kick this up. Let's we'll see what happens. I don't know. Find out. So full blast. We're at 1.6. And that's at. 1.28, 100 amps. I've got 200 amp fuses. We're going to go ahead and roll that back down, turn it off. All right, so now I just got to get the uh, get the battery monitor set up and uh, get this thing charged up. So I'm not going to do a wrap on it yet. Back on the old solar uh, charger, trying to get my lights hooked into this. So what I have over here are these little, these little lights, and honestly, they're not that bright. Uh, but um, I want them to go kind of around the perimeter, you know. Here, got three of them on this side. I got two gonna go in here in the middle, and. Then three on this side and as you might be able to tell my holes went high medium and low so um, figure that out and then i'm going to have one i'm going to put a piece of wood these uh, actual fit a three-quarter lag bolt pretty good so i'm just going to cut a piece of wood and uh put another one of these light switches up here probably down in this area so when i close it it's not going to be hitting this so and it's recessed so i don't even think it would hit so Anyway, uh, I went ahead and drilled all the holes. I wasn't sure how it's going to work, so I didn't film anything. But I just used this step-down drill, and I had got a little uh, area pink marker as to how far I wanted to go in, so that these lights would fit. I went a little too far in a couple of them, so probably just get some silicone, put it around the edge, get it in there. So anyway, I'm just trying to figure out. It's not a lot of room in here as far as the cords go and uh, my idea is to uh, I bought these little connectors oops I bought these little connectors they're supposed to be for 18 to 22 gauge wire and uh, this is 20 gauge wire is what it says on on here doesn't fit so I'm taking my uh, razor knife and I'm just shaving it down a little bit to get in there and also the white is positive on these and the black is negative so it's something to think about if you're getting these lights i hooked them up to a battery just to make sure uh, all righty fans farm i've got one in just as a test i'm gonna go ahead and turn the switch on there goes the light again not super bright in here Alrighty, fans, farm life from the train. Get a little. Let's see if you can see this one. Okay, so these things come in like so. Some of these holes I cut a little too big. Put some glue or something in there. But if you can see this, the red. There's two little. Let's see, I think I showed you this already in here it's hard to see but there's some uh little metal connectors in here and then when you 
the wire goes through, you just close it and makes a contact. So, but in order for the red to connect to the white, the red needs to go on the bottom. I don't know if you can hear it, but it should click. There you go. All right, and then uh, I got some Velcro and we're just gonna Velcro these to the thing so they're out of the way. All right, that's how you do that. We'll come right back. All righty, fans of problem. I've got all the lights in now. Turn the switch on. I got three on this side. I got two on this side. I got three on this side. Uh, I did have those little lights up here on a piece of wood, but I didn't like it. They weren't very bright. So I put these on, and I also, because uh, it's so bright, I've got a piece of uh, shelving rack put down like that so it's not so bright. I'll go ahead and turn these off. Like so. Put that back up there. Uh, my uh, total cost on this for just the components that are in here, minus the charge controller, $910. The charge controller was part of a kit that I bought, a uh, 200 watt kit. It was two 100 watt panels. That was, uh, I think, $175 or something like that. So, but uh, in Washington, in the winter, in the rain, in the clouds, 200 watts, those panels did not charge this. Uh, I, I ran it all the way down to about 37%, and. Uh, they didn't charge, so I bought two 200 watt panels. I have not put them up yet, but if you want to add that in the cost, that was about $350 more. So you're looking at $1,250, maybe $1,300 for an entire solar generator. Uh, I'd have to do some cost comparison. But anyway, this is part three of this build. This is the end of it. I will have another video showing, uh, testing it on my freezer and refrigerator out here in the barn, which is what I kind of built it for, for my house though. Anyway, uh, appreciate you coming along the ride, uh, like and subscribe, and uh, that'll be the final wrap, Farm Life, out.